The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman, Amana, and Dykin Brands. Today, we're joined with Steve Rorda. He's the co-owner of Evergreen Mechanical. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Steve, I, ask, I start off every single interview with this same question. How in the world did you get into the HVAC industry? Uh, right after high school, I went to a, a trade school in Ohio and um, learned HVAC. Um, was there two years and I worked for a contractor since and I started my own business um, and we install a lot of ductless products and uh, we do ducted heat pumps, boilers, furnaces. Um, and that's how it started. Okay. So tell me a little bit uh, after you decided to go out on your own and start your own business, um, how did you come across Daikin? We were... Um, the contractor I worked for uh, previously, we installed some Daikin and actually the wholesaler since then dropped the line and <clears throat> we found a new wholesaler and um, we've had a lot of support. We've been putting in Daikin for two years now and we've had extremely good luck with them. Okay. Uh, when you go out and you meet with customers and talk to customers uh, about the Daikin product, what are some of the responses or uh, what kind of uh, reactions do you get from the, the consumers that you, you service? Um, a lot of a lot of the time when we mention Daikin, the um, customer has not heard of them, but we um, explain the warranty um, and we s explain how uh, this company stands behind everything. We've had extremely good luck, and it's it's really worked out well. Okay, so there's been a lot of government regulation that has been happening, and we do know that uh, we're moving to a more lower GWP refrigerant global warming potential. And, uh, and that moves us into the world of A2Ls. Uh, when did you install your first R32 unit? I think it was about a year ago. Um, since then, we've done, I think, 30. And we, um, we've been told by our uh, wholesaler that we actually installed the, the most, in, most in New England okay. of uh, R32 uh, atmospheres. So that very first homeowner that you installed R32 for, uh, what were some of the selling points that they were looking for when you went in and proposed an, an R32 system? I think the biggest selling point was just the, the efficiency. When uh, you look at the uh, ratings versus um, the old, old lines, it's the, uh, the amount of heat it puts out below zero. Mm. Um, a lot of our customers, are they're looking to um, shave their oil bill and... It's, it was just a no-brainer. From the, uh, the people that are doing the installations out in the field and uh, going from 410 to R32, uh, did they notice any difference in, as far as tools or any difference in, in, in the install uh, process itself? There was really no difference. It was a very smooth uh, transition. It's, yeah, very easy. Okay. Yeah. Was, was there any training that you, was provided to, to them before they decided mm -hmm. to put it in the R32? 32 system? We did have to take a small training um, for A2L refrigerants, but yeah, it was very easy. Okay. Not complicated. And what about tools? Was it pretty much the same tools or were there anything, any Pretty much the same tools. Yeah. Everything was rated for A2L that we had and uh, we didn't have to buy a single thing. So. Okay. And afterwards, here's the big million dollar question. Uh, we know that there's been uh, I think we're approaching almost 300 million units globally that have been installed with R32. But uh, what was uh, the experience for the consumers? You've put in all of these units. Have you had any callbacks or any reason that you've had to go back for service or, or warranty on any of these products? Um, no, we've had extremely good luck with them. Uh, the fact that they actually have Wi-Fi built into these atmosphere heads, um, that has helped a lot. Uh, just a lot of happy customers. We um, and especially with the, like I explained, the, the heating below zero, we've had uh, people heat their homes um, 
and save a lot of fuel oil. It's they're they've been great. Okay. What are you looking forward to as the transi- transition continues to happen beyond the ductless product into the unitary product? Uh, uh, what what do you um, look forward to as far as the as this transition continues? I think as more and more products you know go towards R thirty two, we're going to see the efficiencies come up, and it's yeah, it's going to um, take off. Okay. Have you heard uh, uh, any of your competitors or has anybody been talking about R454B and, and, and any kind of research or thoughts that you have in between R454B and R32? I have heard other manufacturers uh, leaning toward them, but the fact that uh, Daikin is going um, for R32 and they are the first ones to make the leap, it says a lot about the company. Okay. Any other uh, final thoughts or comments that you have for your fellow contractors that are out there uh, as we look to go towards this transition uh, moving up in, in 2024 and into 2025? Um, we're just uh, looking uh, forward to putting in more R32. It's, uh, it's you know, going to be in every heat pump, every dike and heat pump pretty soon and uh, looking forward to it with the heating efficiencies. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate that. And for all of you that are out there, uh, if you liked this episode, please go ahead and and like it. And uh, please go ahead and follow the Accelerate HVAC Success channel if you'd like to be informed of the latest episodes that we have coming out. Thank you so much, Steve, for coming here and joining us. Thank you for having me. 